Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is Akiru, which in Japanese means to live. Now, Akiru is a 1952 Japanese drama film, which is co-written and directed by Akira Kurosawa. Now, Kurosawa is considered to be one of the greatest Japanese filmmakers of all time. Kurosawa was very well known for his samurai films, films like The Seven Samurai and Yojimbo and Hidden Fortress. He also directed films like Rashomon and Drunken Angel. Kurosawa also had a huge influence on directors like Sergio Leone and even George Lucas and I think Martin Scorsese as well. And Kurosawa's samurai films actually had a huge influence on American Western films. Now, this is not a samurai film, but samurai films were what Akira Kurosawa was best known for. Or at least it seems like that's what he was best known for. The film is also loosely based on a Russian novel titled The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo... Toastoy? I, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. Now, this movie is not a direct adaptation of that book, but it does take a lot of the same themes and plot ideas of that novel. The film was also put out by Toho, which is the Japanese film company that would later become best known, at least to Western audiences, as the company that distributed all the Godzilla movies. Now, the plot of Akiru is, it's about a bureaucrat named Watanabe who finds out that he has stomach cancer and he only has, at most, a year left to live, if that. And with finding out that his time in this world is limited, he decides to better himself as a person and he actually tries to start living now that he realizes that he only has a few months left to live. And above all else, he actually tries to start doing things to help the community because that was technically what his job was. However, for years, it was really just paperwork for him, and it was just a job for him, and he didn't really... He was very detached from it, but now he actually tries to start doing things to help people. And that's just the basic plot outline for Akiru. There's a lot more to this movie than just that. Now, Akiru was an excellent film, and this is a deeply moving film, and a very emotionally devastating film, and this is also a very thought-provoking film as well. And this movie really does make you think about what you would do if you found out that you only had a limited time left to live. Like, would you change your life in any way, shape, or form? Would you reevaluate your life in any way? Would you reflect back on how you've been living up until that point? Like, what would you do if you found out that your life's clock was reaching midnight? And it's also a very emotionally devastating film. Like, I was crying during this movie, and you really do find yourself caring about the main character of this movie, even though you know he is eventually going to die, you still find yourself really caring about him and empathizing with him. Now, one of the things I thought was really interesting about this film is the film is strangely optimistic and pessimistic at the same time. I would say it's mostly pessimistic, but there is some optimism in the film as well. But I feel like what Akira Kurosawa is trying to say with this film is that it's really only in moments of crisis when a person can truly better better his or herself, like, because there are other characters in the film who claim that they learned the same lesson that Watanabe learns, that they have to start helping the community, but, uh, really they don't end up learning that lesson at all, and it's really only Watanabe who learns the lesson in the end, and it's almost like Kurosawa is saying that it's only in death when, or it's only when we're facing death when our true character come through and when we can truly better ourselves. 
And the film is very much a criticism of biocracy, particularly Japanese biocracy, because this was a Japanese film. But in the film, like, all of Watanabe's co-workers, like, they're not really doing anything to help the community, which is technically what their job is, and even Watanabe wasn't really doing anything to help the people when he, before he found out that he was dying of stomach cancer, but it's only when he realized realizes that he's about to die where he actually decides to act and start doing something to help this community. And once again, the film is strangely pessimistic because by the end of the film, really Watanabe is the only one who truly learns the lesson about what they should be doing. But the film is also kind of optimistic as well, because in the film, Watanabe does eventually succeed at what he's trying to do by the end of the film, but at the same time, though, it's only because... It seems like it's only because he realizes that he's going to die that he actually does this, and once again, it seems like Kurosawa is saying that it's only in moments of crisis when, char when our character comes through. One thing I thought was really interesting about this film film is the relationship between Watanabe and his son in this movie, and what's interesting is there's a real disconnect between these two characters throughout the entire film, and this disconnect between father and son is never truly resolved, even by the end of it, it's never really resolved at all, and I thought that was really interesting. Like, in the film you find out through flashbacks that Watanabe, while his son was growing up, he kind of tried to be there for his son, but he was never quite there the way he should have been. And this has kind of led to a disconnect and divide between him and his son now that his son is an adult, and once again, the disconnect is never fully resolved, if it's resolved at all, throughout the entire movie. And another thing I thought was really interesting about the film is, in the movie, there are only two people that Watanabe tells that he has stomach cancer, and neither one of them are his close family. One is a co-worker of his, who is this young woman who, when he starts, there's certain points in the movie where he starts, like, hanging out with her, and people mistake this as a romantic relationship, and it's really more of, I, I feel like it's more of he just wants some kind of companionship, uh, but basically, like, this woman is the only one who he tells he has stomach cancer, but he also tells this author that he meets in a bar that he has stomach cancer, and this is a guy that, who he hardly knows, and I thought that was interesting how he only tells two people throughout the entire film that he has cancer, and neither one of them are his close family. The film is also a very subtle commentary and critique on post-war Japan, but it's done very subtly because the war is only mentioned one time in the entire movie, and that's in a flashback when you see Watanabe seeing his son off to the war, but that's really the only time World War II is actually mentioned in the entire film, but the film I do think is a very subtle critique of post-war Japan. For example, the fact that Watanabe has cancer is actually symbolic of what a lot of Japanese people were going through after World War II, because after World War II, Japan was pretty much littered with fallout from the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and cancer was actually the leading cause of death in Japan after uh, the Second World War. And also, after World War II, the younger generation in Japan was definitely adopting a lot of these Western American ideals, and you see that with how, you see that in the movie with how Watanabe is living in contrast with how his son and daughter-in-law are living, and this could also be part of the divide that's between them, and Akira Kurosawa in this film is kind of making a a commentary on the divide between the older generation and the younger generation, which possibly be could be because of the war. 
Also, after World War II, when Allied forces occupied Japan, there was an attempt to institute democracy in Japan, and Akira Kurosawa in this film is kind of making a criticism of that, while Akira Kurosawa certainly, I don't think, was against democracy. He, the issue he had with it, and this comes through with his criticism of bureaucracy in the film, the issue is, is it really democracy when the bureaucrats aren't doing anything to actually help the people, and that's one of the main criticisms that the film makes, and the fact that nobody working with Watanabe actually wants to do anything to help this community, and he's the only one who actually tries to act, and once again, the film is kind of making, it makes a, a criticism of bureaucracy, but it's also making a criticism of post-war Japan. As you can tell, I did watch the audio commentary for this film, which is where I got a lot of my information from. Now, a friend of mine actually one time referred to this movie as an existential It's a Wonderful Life because in a way it does kind of touch on some of the same themes of It's a Wonderful Life, only it's not a supernatural movie like that movie was. Like, there's no angels or anything in this movie, but I would actually compare this movie more to Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Like, once again, there's no ghost and there's no supernatural elements in this movie, but I do feel like thematically this film does touch on a lot of the same themes that A Christmas Carol touched on. Like, the whole thing of a person trying to change himself, I mean, obviously the character of Watanabe is much different from the character of Ebenezer Scrooge, but I notice some thematic elements that are similar, though. Now, in the film, Watanabe is played by actor Takashi Shimura. I probably butchered his name, but Shimura gives a genuinely heartbreaking performance as the character of Watanabe, and it's a deeply moving performance as well. Now, that actor, Takashi Shimura, would actually go on to play the character of Professor Amadi in the original Godzilla. Shimura also acted in a lot of Kurosawa's other films as well. Now, the fact that Shimura was in both this movie and the original Godzilla is interestingly not the only Godzilla connection that this movie has because the director of the original Godzilla, Ashiro Honda, was actually a friend of Akira Kurosawa and I think actually learned a lot from Akira Kurosawa as well. And believe it or not, and this is going to sound like a weird freaking comparison, but I actually do think there are some similarities between this movie and the original Godzilla. Now hear me out, because I know they're two completely different movies. One's a giant monster movie, and the other's a reality-based drama film, but I feel like both films are making a commentary on post-war Japan. One's obviously doing it more subtly than the other is, because the commentary on post-war Japan in this movie is a much more subtle commentary on post-war Japan, whereas the commentary in Godzilla is a much more overt commentary, because Ashiro Honda was very open about the fact that Godzilla in that movie was a metaphor for the atomic bomb, and World War II is mentioned quite a bit in the original Godzilla. Godzilla, whereas in this movie the war is only mentioned once, so one is a very subtle commentary on the war while the other film is a much more overt commentary, but I feel like both films are making a commentary and a statement about post-war Japan. Or maybe I'm pulling that comparison out of my ass, I don't know. But all jokes aside, Akiru is an excellent film, and if you haven't seen this film, I highly recommend it. It's a deeply moving film, and it's a very emotionally devastating film, but it's a film I highly recommend. So, that was my review on Akira Kurosawa's Akiru, and bye.